Welcome, everyone, to today's Google Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangouts. Uh, my name is John Mueller. I am a Webmaster Trends Analyst here at Google in Switzerland. And part of what I do is talk with webmasters and publishers like the ones here in the Hangout. And uh, if any of you here in the Hangout who are fairly new to the Hangouts um, want to go ahead and ask a first question, feel free to jump on in. I, OK, hi. Hi, this is Mary Ayanati. Uh, thanks for letting me join. I actually have a question on uh, a site I'm working on. So the site got transferred from a HTTP uh, colon www.blackroofing.com to just blackroofing.com with no www. 301 redirects were set up. They're tested, and they're working. And now the client wants to take down the page, the pages from the old website. So the first thing I wanted to do was put a change of address in on Search Console. And there's two Search Console accounts, one for the www and one for the domain without www. But, and, and so we want to get rid of the www account or that site. Now, when I went in to put a change of address in that Search Console account, I don't see it when I click on the gear. I see um, set properties, I think. I see two options, um, okay. preferences and site settings. So that's my first question, is how do I do a change of address for that? OK. So basically, you need to put them in the same account. So both of those sites listed separately in the same account. Then we know that you're kind of in control of both of these, and then you can set the change of address there. But if you've already set up the 301 redirects, then the change of address probably doesn't do anything significant there. So it's something that just takes time. And over time, as we recrawl the pages, see the redirect, we'll jump over to the other version of the URL. And it's not something you'd need to kind of artificially take the old site out. If you have the redirect set up, it'll just happen naturally. OK. Well, that's easy enough. <laughs> um, and that was my only question. So. Perfect. All right. I think we had one more. I think you're muted. Yep. OK. So Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. is that right? Um, basically, it was just an issue with my um, website. I had some problems with some malware and some backdoor risk, uh, scripts and stuff. Um, originally, we used Webmaster, um, the Webmaster console to request a review. and. Um, it threw back a message saying it's fine, even though it wasn't. Um, I'm now unable to request a review. Um, my website is clean. I've changed all the, the cPanel passwords and everything. Um, but it's still popping up with the red malware page. And like literally, I've strolled through the internet, tried to find every result I've used. Um, start I can't seem to get rid of the messages. And I was just wondering, is there anyone at Google that can help me? <laughs> um, um, I can give some sort of information on yeah. the screen share. Um, so if I just log on to my, um, let's just go on to the website. It's probably a really simple problem, but um, it's, it's, it's a university um, website. So um, we do tend to have a lot of student traffic on there. And at the moment, um, every time you search for the website through Google, it throws up a message saying this, this website may harm your computer. And obviously, it puts viewers off. And no one's going on the website anymore. Um, so if I just click on the screen, does this work? How does the screen share thing work? Um, entire screen share. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So if I go into a, oh, yeah. and know my luck, the message is probably gone. But I also read that it takes, it can take up to two weeks for sort of Google to re-index pages and get rid of messages. And so is it just one page? Well, website, it's all or? the blog posts. It's all the blog posts. So let me just get rid of this. Um, it might have gone now, no more look. Um, so if I go on to blog, uh, and every time I clicked on a blog post, it just popped up with, and, and now it's gone. OK, it might have just gone. <laughs> I seem okay. to have had this, I've had this problem for the past two weeks, and um, it seemed to have fixed itself. 
So is that because Google has re-indexed the website and got rid and gotten rid of all the messages? Because it was just used to, used to just pop up with a red, big ugly red yeah. screen saying um, malware warning, this site is unsafe, and okay, everything seems to be fine now. It's a miracle. Maybe. I, um, what, what might be happening is that uh, yeah, we, we flagged it for the website in general, and then we started flagging it for the blog specifically. Right. And if you had the blog verified in Search Console separately, then you would be, still see that information. Yeah. And uh, we automatically kind of recheck for malware from time yeah. to time. Yeah. I think so it might have just fixed just, over time. I yeah. did read that it might take um, probably days, even weeks. Um, Usually, if you submit a review request, that'll be processed within about a day. Oh, but, okay. Uh, if for, for example, for that slash for the blog, if that's in a separate directory or a separate subdomain, then if you weren't able to submit a review request for that, then probably we just needed to re kind of recache all of that. Yeah, I mean, if I just search fresh.com media, see, look, if you have a look at this one here, this site may harm computer. How do I go about getting rid of this? So now that puts a lot. Do you still see the uh, message? Let's have a look. It just goes to some Google search help. Okay. Um, and what, what I do there in in a general case like this is post in the help forum. Post so in, the in, in the webmaster help forum, yeah. we, we have a bunch of people who are really experienced with handling hacked sites and malware and kind of the steps that you need to go through. Okay. And they can also tell you if you're doing the right things and it's still not working, they can contact us directly and say, hey, in this specific case, something crazy is happening and someone needs to take a look at it. Now. Okay. I mean, I, I have posted in the forum. I've actually posted twice and it got merged into one. And that was due to sort of links straight from the website. Um, but I think I might post a different um, question about the search results okay. that Google throws up. Um, okay. And hopefully, like, it, so there's no sort of technical way to get rid of these. Uh, meta tag or a setting where you can just say, don't ever show yeah. a warning like this, because mm. if you think there's still a problem, okay. then we'll still show that. Right. But uh, maybe this is something that will also get picked up automatically as we recall that part of the site as well. Okay. Um, because every time I log on to the Webmaster Console, I can't actually find the button to request a review. So unless a, a previous review is pending, um, I, don't, um, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see if I just I, log. I'll, I'll take a look afterwards, and yeah. otherwise, submit a review request on our side. Yeah, if you can do, please. I just, I really, I was really struggling talking to someone um, from Google. Came across this forum. I was like, ah, I'm gonna go on the forum. Um, so if I go onto my webmaster, um, webmaster so is that it? Yep, um, it doesn't say anything if I go onto my dashboard. It doesn't. Like, uh, in the security uh, it's part. security issues, and then yep. Okay. Um, is is the site indexed like that, like with dub 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 and, and all of that, or is it without dub dub dub? Maybe we're I, showing the warning for the other version. I have no idea. Literally, have no idea. Um, I don't know. Can you go back to the search result? Sorry? Can you go back to that search yeah, result? Yeah, 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 okay. It, it's been indexed with the W's, John, as far as I can see. I'm Googling it at the same time. Okay. And it's been indexed with the W's, and I'm getting the same warning. Okay, yeah. So then, can we get rid of the W's? No, no, that, no. Should, uh, that shouldn't play wrong. Well. Mm. That's, uh, I, I'll, I'll double check on our side to see if there's something kind of stuck with the review request for yourself. Yes, if you can do, please. Sure. OK, that's great. Um, so do, can I share an email address with you um, for future contact? Or um, just through here? I'll just track, track down your forum post. And yeah, that's great. OK, thank you very much. I think I'm just sure. going to stay here just to All right. get some more information. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. Thank you. All right. Okay, more questions from people new to the Hangouts here.
Yes, go for it. Can I have with my question? Sure. Thank you, John. Great. So my first question would be um, about the indexation of hidden content uh, in tabs. Product descriptions like reviews or read more. And uh, does it have an influence to the page ranking or what's the influence to the page ranking? So if the content isn't directly visible on the page, what will happen is we'll probably pick it up for indexing because we see it when we crawl the page. But we're not going to give it the full weight when it comes to ranking. So if something is important for your page, then I'd make sure it's visible directly when you visit that page. OK. All right, I have uh, another question, the next question. I've okay. just uh, copy-pasted in the chat. Could you please take a look at that link? So this is a link to the Google Webmaster uh, okay. blog. So uh, a question about infinite scroll. Yeah, with this implementation, we get duplicated title errors plus indexation of redundant um, impagination pages, which is not entirely correct. So what do you think about this? I wouldn't worry about the titles. That's something that, uh, on the one hand, you could set up separate titles per page if you wanted to. I don't think we actually did that for that example. But it's not something that would cause any problems in search. So we flag that in Search Console because sometimes people aren't aware of that. And uh, they have the same title across the whole website. That's something definitely worth fixing, but in general, that's, it's not a requirement that you have unique titles for everything. All right. And uh, with regards to, what was it, uh, indexation of redundant pagination pages, I don't know exactly what you mean. Can you elaborate? I mean um, the extra pages, all the pages that are marked as uh, um, with the real canonical. OK. Um, so with the rel canonical, what usually happens is we fold them together. So we have one version, right? So I'm not, not really sure what you mean with redundant pages there. I think that should be OK. I mean, by, by, by calling them redundant, I mean, those, those are um, like extra pages that do not need to be indexated. Sure, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's something you don't need to index like that, especially if you have bigger category pages, kind of making the decision between indexing all of the pages in the set, indexing maybe just the beginning pages of the set. Um, that's something you kind of have to decide on your side. Sometimes it makes sense to index everything. Sometimes it makes sense to just uh, take the main pages from the category set and kind of leave the rest there, because we can still crawl to the actual detail pages in, in other ways. I think in this specific example, the only way to reach the detail pages is to actually go through the paginated set. So we do kind of need to go through that to find those detail pages. If you have a normal web shop, for example, then that's something where there'll be multiple ways to kind of reach the detail pages. And we wouldn't have to go scroll through all of the product categories and all of the, the listings in the category pages to actually find those links. So that's something where sometimes it makes sense to index these pages. Sometimes it makes sense not to index those pages. It really depends on your website. All right, thanks a lot for your answer. I have another, the next question. It's related to the first one. Okay. So the question is, what is the right way to implement the pagination on a website with a brand page that has more than one million products? There is no way to create a view all page with a rel canonical to it. Yeah. So in, in a case like that, I would just work with categories so that uh, we have multiple kind of ways to, to reach to, through to the detailed content, which could be categories based on some semantic structure that you have on your site, if that's possible. If these pages are totally independent of each other and it's basically just a listing of maybe a, a million documents that you have on your website that you can't categorize clearly, 
then that's something where maybe it makes sense to interlink some of these pages separately so that when we can crawl through part of the website, we can discover the rest of the website from there. So not something where you have to click through a million pagination steps, but maybe a, a kind of a net across the whole web of content that you have there. OK. All right, thank you. And uh, would it be a proper way to arrange a pagination as, as I've just uh, pasted in the chat? Take a look. Um, let me see. So pagination with robots, no index, no follow. If you com use pagination with no index and no follow, then we essentially won't index that page. We won't follow the links there. So we wouldn't be able to discover the individual detail pages from a paginated set like that. OK, I'm, I'm typing right now. It's just a mistake. Uh, no index and follow when you implement no index. Oh. Oh, no index with follow. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you could do that, sure. I, I think that that would be fine. So what would happen there is we wouldn't index those individual pages, but we'd follow the links that we find there. So it would help us discover the individual detail pages from there without actually indexing the kind of category or the listing pages. Will allow to transfer the page weight signals through the links on the page? Um, follow. With just follow, yes, it, it would transfer page rank. What about no index? No index, it's essentially we just don't show the page in the search results. It's not uh, that it wouldn't be able to kind of obtain page rank. But m maybe some links, uh, external links, are going to page two with no index and follow. Will, it, uh, will this page? Uh, transfer the page weight to another. Sure. sure. Yes. So no index follow work well, and uh, Google understand. We try. Yeah. John, can I ask you a related question? Sure. Uh, but those products on those pages with uh, no index follow, those will be indexed. The, pr the those respective products. I mean, will <laughs> Google create a global? Sure. I mean, if uh, if we can index the individual detail pages, sure, we, we can pick that up. I understand. OK, thank you. I, I think for, for most websites, you'd have this kind of natural structure with the, the different categories and subcategories, which makes it a lot easier for us to pick up the content. So I see kind of the, the option of having a paginated set that's no index but has follow as more of, of an edge case, so not something where I'd say everyone should do something like this. Because sometimes these category pages are useful on their own as well, and it wouldn't make sense to always just hide them from the search results. Thank you. All right, uh, let me run through some of the questions that were submitted. I took a quick look at uh, a bunch of them and tried to pick out some that were a bit different than the ones that we usually have. Uh, let me try to find them. Uh, let's see. You were recently quoted as saying your best SEO advice was to be consistent. Can you please elaborate? Um, I think this is something where we, we often see people come to us either with questions or with a website that essentially isn't consistent with itself. Uh, for example, maybe they'll use a rel canonical across pages where one of them has a no index on it, where you're essentially saying, well, these pages are the same, but they're not the same. Um, or sometimes we'll see situations where a rel canonical is set to a URL that actually has a redirect back to the other page. And in a case like that, you're also essentially telling us something that we don't really know what to do. And every time you leave it to search engines to kind of make that decision on what should be done in that situation, then you kind of have to accept that it could go this way or it could go the other way. Uh, maybe one search engine will say, well, a redirect and, an, and a rel canonical, that means we'll index the redirecting page. Another one might say, we'll index the canonical page. And both of these might change your opinion over time as well. So if you have a preference about what you want a search engine to do, then just be consistent about it, 
make sure that you're providing all of the signals in a way that they really match your intent. So use the right URLs, pick something and go with it across the whole website, use those URLs everywhere, just really be as consistent as you can because then search engines can kind of follow your lead and say, well, they really want this page index, so okay, we'll just do that. Um, let's see, next question here. Uh, does Google use information gathered from your terms of service, policies, about us pages to make an assumption about whether you're a quality, reputable business? Would we rank better if we displayed as much info there as possible? Uh, as far as I know, no, we don't use any of that for search. Uh, what we might do is pull out information like your addresses or your phone numbers or your opening hours and try to display that in search. But it's not that we would try to parse your legal documentation on your website and say, oh, this is a good company because they're doing the right thing with user data, those kind of things. Um, users might care for that, and indirectly you might have an effect. Um, there might also be some requirements uh, depending on the ad programs or which users you're targeting. Um, but from a search point of view, essentially you can put whatever you would like there. Um, does Google look at the quality of our 404 pages or our internal search on our websites when taking overall site quality into account? So we don't take into account 404 pages because they have a 404 result code, and we don't actually look at the content there. So if you have a really nice 404 page, that's not something we would notice. But of course, that's something users would notice. And if they're able to kind of continue staying on your website and doing whatever task they were setting out to do, then that's a good thing for them. And that could result in them recommending your site to others, kind of keeping it in mind for the future as well. So we don't take a look at the 404 pages for search, but uh, users probably do care a lot about being able to find the information on your site, even if they land on a wrong URL. Um, do you use different ranking criteria in different countries? Uh, for example, in German, English, or Swedish, or are there stricter ranking criteria in larger markets with more competition? Uh, no, we tend not to use different ranking criteria or thresholds in individual countries as far as, as much as we can. We prefer to have our algorithms in a way that they work globally across all types of content, across all languages, all countries. And uh, for the most part, I think we're able to do that fairly well. Sometimes what happens is that individual search features, which could be things like a rich snippet, uh, knowledge card, those kind of things, those might be available in some languages or some countries before other countries. So that's a kind of a difference between the search results across the countries, but it's not the case that we would say, well, the ranking criteria are completely different in Germany compared to France or compared to China, for example. Of course, competition might be very different uh, if you're ranking for something local, for example. But uh, from our point of view, essentially, it's the same. Um, it's kind of a blast from the past. Uh, is it a must-have or almost to have a link from the DMOZ, so the Open Directory Project and or Wikipedia, for Google to understand that you're a brand? Um, no, it's definitely not a requirement. Uh, to have a link from the Open Directory Project or DMOZ or Wikipedia for Google to understand uh, what your website is about. So that's something you don't need to kind of artificially push. Um, I believe some information we might pick up from the Wikipedia pages with regards to knowledge cards, the knowledge panel on the side. Um, but essentially, that's a lot of stuff that we can pick up from your website directly as well. And it's certainly not a requirement that you need to have a, a specific link from any of these other sites uh, for us to pick up any information on your website. John, just a quick one on the knowledge graph there. You said about you don't need Wikipedia, and we tried to get a Wikipedia page, but um, it got rejected. Uh, we've had the, the schema markup on the site for quite a while now, uh, but still no signs of any knowledge graph. It's just a big uh, blank space. 
how can we try and get that pushed through or is there anything we can do to give more signals to Google on that? Uh, not specifically. So that's something where our algorithms try to figure out when it makes sense to show that and when it doesn't make sense to show that. So that's not something where you can kind of force that uh, into Google. Uh, by having the right markup on your pages, you essentially have the, the prerequisites set up so that we could use it if we or when we decide to actually show that. Um, but it's not something that we would always show for um, for any website that has this markup. Okay, thanks, Cheers. All right. Uh, if we have a domain with two language versions, for example, example.com slash es and slash en, how should I handle my preferred version for the home page? Should I redirect to the preferred version with a 301 or a 302? Um, you can essentially do it either way. So we have a great blog post on handling uh, your home page. Let me just pull out uh, the exact title to make it a little bit easier. Um, just a second. Uh, which just a second. <laughs> um, too many blog posts on our blog. Uh, creating the right home page for your international users, um, which essentially covers um, kind of our recommendations with regards to international home pages, with regards to redirects, if you want to redirect to a preferred version, with regards to uh, kind of swapping out the content, if you want to do dynamic serving for a specific language version, and how you can set up the hreflang markup between those individual language versions and your home page that might be doing something really smart. So that's something I'd kind of look out for. Uh, check out that blog post, uh, creating the right home page for your international users on our blog. Um, let me see. Um, so many questions submitted, which is great, but uh, kind of hard to find the right ones. Uh, which is better for 301 redirects, uh, an absolute URL or a relative URL? You can use either one. We should be able to pick up either one, essentially. Um, sometimes it's easier to kind of debug issues on a website that uses absolute URLs, because then you don't have to worry about which location a user is actually coming from. Um, but essentially, either, either one of those would work. Uh, hey, John, a quick question regarding redirects, if I may. Uh, I'm sorry for the low quality sound. Um, so um, I have a client that's trying to move her website from a blogger site to, to a custom uh, WordPress hosted, uh, not WordPress, uh, custom hosted with uh, WordPress CMS website. Uh, the problem is that a blogger allows you to do uh, like a kind of a few options to, to do redirects. Uh, one of them is just you know doing an intermediary page where they have to tell you that this blog is being redirected. Uh, are you sure you want to do this? You click yes or no. I'm assuming that's not really a good option um, search-wise. And uh, unfortunately, they don't have any 301 redirect option. But you can do, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, meta refresh, uh, use a header to, to redirect users, or a JavaScript type of redirect. Would those work, and would those work better than the option, the default option that they allow? I don't know the specifics about how to set that up on Blogger, so I'd, I'd have to double check. As far as I have that, uh, that in, in mind, uh, what you can do is specify that you're hosting your site on a custom domain, and then it'll do the redirect from the blogger URLs to your custom domain, and on there you can essentially do whatever server-side redirects that you want. 
but it's, it's been a really long time since I've uh, played with that, so I, I don't know for sure what, what the current status there is with Blogger. Yeah, well, the option that you mentioned, if the custom domain you're choosing in, a, in the Blogger options isn't hosted on Blogger, you get that intermediary page that tells you you are being redire redirected to a non-Blogger um, domain, so we cannot guarantee it's not spam malware or something else. Do you wish to be redirected? And you get the 302 redirect link, yes. So this is why I don't think this is, might be the best option to do that. And maybe a meta refresh might be better. I don't know. You, you can tell us next time. Um, I, I would check with Fetch's Google to see what actually is sent to Googlebot in a case like that. Maybe what's happening is we show the, the warning for users and we just redirect Googlebot to, to kind of simplify things, or maybe Googlebot is able to kind of click through that directly. But I kind of double check what actually is seen by Googlebot there. And um, I, I can ask on my side as well, but uh, it should be something you can probably try out on your side too. OK, but worst case scenario, we have to implement a meta refresh redirect. Would that be? Okay. That could work too. That could work. Okay, I'll follow you, or I'll follow up with you on Google Plus one side. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. thanks. Um, how does Google treat a rel no refer tag on links? So, I forgot to double check this actually with with our documentation. But as far as I know, this is only something that would be handled in. Chrome directly, so essentially it doesn't forward the refer when a user clicks on it, but it has no effect on our site in search. So it's not a rel no follow. It's essentially something that your client, so the the user in the browser, might be able to interpret in a specific way, but it doesn't have any effect on search. Um, HTML sitemap, in addition to an XML one. Do you need one? Uh, if you have millions of pages, uh, perhaps a mini version with categories would be better. Um, essentially, this is really up to you. So if you have an XML sitemap, that helps us to understand which of these pages are new and which of them have changed. The HTML sitemap is more something for the user for the navigation within the website. And if you already have a clear navigation with clear category structure on your site, then you probably don't need an HTML sitemap. So that's something, from a search point of view, you can certainly create one if you want to use one, but it's not something that you absolutely need to do. I'd really look to see if it makes sense for your site or not. Um, OK. Um, so this was a two-part question. I managed to find the second part while searching briefly. Uh, there was probably a first part somewhere. Uh, when I import organic search terms from Search Console into Search Analytic and uh, Google Analytics, uh, some of those search terms are marked as not determined in analytics. Uh, Google states the following reason for this, uh, and then a quote from our documentation. What's happening here? So essentially, what, what happens on our side is when we recognize that something is more of a unique search term uh, that where we don't see a lot of people searching for, actually, then what we'll do is we'll kind of uh, suppress that with regards to search analytics. So the Search Analytics home page, uh, Help Center has a little bit more information about what we're actually doing there. But essentially, what happens is in uh, Search Console, if you go to Search Analytics, that won't be shown as a query. You'll see on top, like, total 100 queries or 100, uh, 100 impressions. And in the table, maybe it'll show, like, 70 if you add those lines up. So that's something in Search Console. We would just not show that query. In, in Google Analytics, when it imports the Search Console data to kind of make it clearer for the user, we show that kind of that difference between the total on top and the sum of the rows as, I believe, not determined or something like that uh, as a name in, in Google Analytics. So essentially, it's the same thing. You're just looking at it in different ways. Uh, it's nothing different than the data that we already show in Search Console. 
Um, some websites block countries by IP. Uh, how are they still ranking in those countries? Uh, what's up with that? So from our side, essentially, the, the only requirement we have is that Googlebot sees the same content as a user from that country would see. And uh, in general, since we crawl from the US, that means that we need to be able to see the content that a user in the US would be able to see. Otherwise, we would consider that cloaking, and that would be the webmaster guidelines. So for example, if users in Germany aren't able to see your content at all, but Googlebot, when it crawls from the US, and users in the US are able to see the content, then we would pick that up, show that in search. We would even show that to users in Germany, even though they might not be able to actually see the content. And uh, the main reason behind that is more of a practical reason in that we can't check out every website, every URL from all countries in the world. So we can't really know which countries this URL is really accessible from and which countries it isn't accessible from. So in those cases, we'll still show that in the search results. And uh, that's essentially how it works there. So. Of course, the tricky part is if it's content isn't available in the US and we crawl from the US to try to see that content, then we can't really pick up that content to show in search. So that's kind of a, a tricky edge case there. Hey, uh, John, what do you think about the user experience? For example, if I'm as a user, I cannot find the content that I'm looking for. I mean, we've met uh, with such issue. For example, one of our websites is uh, not ranking as good as, for example, some other websites, which is blocked at the same moment. Yeah, I, I mean, personally, as, as a user outside of the US, because Googlebot doesn't crawl from Switzerland, I, I don't really like that at all. Uh, because sometimes I do run across content where I see it's indexed, but I go to the page and says, well, sorry, uh, people in Switzerland aren't allowed to actually see this content. So that's something that. I think from a user experience, it's it's not great. Um, but uh, at, the at the same time, at least at the moment, we don't really have any other options available for webmasters to say, well, this content shouldn't be shown to users in this, this, and this country. Uh, so what will happen is, is, like you mentioned, people will click on a result. They'll see a page. It's blocked. Maybe it's a friendly error message. Maybe it's just uh, the server doesn't respond to the IP addresses. but at, at the moment, we, we don't really have a better solution for that. OK. Um, hi, Yom. Um, can you answer my question? Sure. Go for it. Uh, OK. Well, uh, before you answer my question about, uh, um, about the domain with different language versions, languages version, and uh, well, I you you said that uh, we can do it uh, either way. We yes, yes, yeah. So you can either redirect or you can show the language content on the home page. That's essentially up to you. Sometimes one or the other works better. Hey John, can I proceed with with the previous question that I had? All right. Or right, let me just run through a few more questions, and then I'll just open it up for everyone. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, let me see. Uh, is it possible to get top ranking for a website with almost no backlinks, but a great user experience or a great website? So yes, that's theoretically possible. Uh, we use over 200 factors with regards to crawling, indexing, and ranking. So we could pick up a site that has almost no or no ranking, uh, no backlinks, and show that in the search results. Um, but obviously, it, it'll be hard for us because we don't really know how this website kind of fits in with the context of the rest of the web. It's it's really tricky for us to understand. In relation to the other sites that we do know more about, how should we show it? So theoretically, it's possible. In practice, it's probably going to be really hard, especially if there are, it's a competitive environment where lots of people are 
really providing something really fantastic that others have picked up and kind of recommended already. So possible, but probably not that easy. Uh, when we do 301 to completely two different uh, domains, for example, a parenting site redirects to women's news portal, and the women's news portal doesn't have an exact match of the same content, how does Google kind of treat that? So from our point of view, in a case like that, it's not the case that a site is moving from one domain to another. So we can't transfer everything from just one domain to the other and replace the existing one. We really have to look at that on a per URL basis and try to figure out what is actually happening here. Is like a part of the content moving in? Are these sites kind of uh, migrating together and merging into something bigger? Um, what exactly is going on here? So this is something where we really have to look at it on a per URL basis, transfer the signals where we can, and uh, kind of figure out how we should treat the combined version. Um, all right, let's see. Um, we added a sitemap with 12,000 images to Search Console, and it still shows zero indexed images after three weeks. A manual check shows that they are actually indexed. What's, what's up with that? So I'm not completely sure on this one. I need to double check with the team on that. But what might be happening is that Search Console is essentially giving you information about the indexed web pages and not the actual image files that you have specified there. So that might be that it's just working as intended there. But I'll double check with the, the Search Console team and the Sitemaps team to see what should be shown in the case when you have in, images in your sitemap uh, separately. So one thing to kind of keep in mind, the images in the sitemap need to be specified as images and associated with the landing page. So you can't just take the image URLs and include them as normal URLs in the sitemap because we would see that as essentially, um, for example, JPEG files that are trying to be indexed for web search. And that's not really what you're trying to do. You're trying to get those images associated with the landing page. And that pair of pages would then be indexed in image search. So it's always a situation where you have the landing page and the image, and both of them need to be indexed exactly in that way. All right, um, with that, we have like 15 minutes left. Let's just open it up for everyone. And if we have more time, I'll run through some more of the questions that were submitted. What else is on your mind? John, I have a small question. It's not entirely related to webmasters, but to Google Analytics. Uh, what I, I'm trying to do is um, I was running a lot of filters, and I and I couldn't get the device versions for the iPhones. It's a well debated subject in the past. The problem is uh, one of the Google uh, employees did paste an answer at uh, uh, at this URL. Uh, I've pasted it in the chat, saying that this problem was so was solved. I'm seeing a lot of comments over there that this problem wasn't solved, but probably bec uh, because this post is closed. Uh, it won't reach the the person in charge. Can I please ask you to pass this URL on, or maybe someone can have another look? Um, sure. Or what I do is just start another thread in in the forum. I believe they just moved to a new platform, so maybe that's something where they'll be able to kind of keep a better eye on on things that are being posted there. But uh, it sounds like. Other people have the same problem, so um, I, I just post in the forum and, and see what happens. OK, thank you. But I, I'll copy it out and see if there's something I can point someone here at specifically. I don't know a lot of people on the analytics side, so it's uh, hard for me to say, well, you need to go answer this thread, because I have no idea what, what all they're doing at the moment. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Hi, John. John? Yes. Hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm happy to see the I have a little problem with uh, WordPress indexing and Google uh, search. Uh, when I'm searching, 
searching uh, for uh, article title I found something like this uh, mm -hmm. www.mindsite.com uh, slash tag slash article title it is not uh, the right uh, landing page it's just uh, in um, RC page I think it is a um, bad experience for users so how can I do that so is it that WordPress shows the wrong content, or yes. how do you mean? Uh, it shows the um, tags uh, page. It's like uh, an archive page containing the targeted uh, title plus uh, related uh, posts in one page. And but that's the page the that's shown in the search uh, results? Article, uh, the original uh, article um, is already indexed uh, successfully in Google, but it doesn't appear in the results. Uh, how can I do? Okay. Um, if it's indexed, but it doesn't appear for those search results, probably we, we don't see it as being too relevant at the moment for that query. So what, what I would do there is take this example to the help forums or to another webmaster forum and kind of um, make it clear what, what people can do to reproduce this. So I'm searching for this keyword, for example, from my blog post, and it shows the wrong version. Uh, and usually, people will be able to, to kind of help you a little bit more based on the exact details there that you provide. Um, in, in, in cases where they are not able to kind of figure out what's happening. Usually, they can also escalate it to us and say, in this specific case, we're, we're kind of doing the wrong thing. One thing I kind of caution about is if you're doing a search for something that's kind of artificial, so if you're looking for the URL or if you're looking for a whole sentence that you copy and paste from this uh, blog post, then that's something where the search results will be a little bit trickier because we don't really have kind of that, that simple situation where we can say, well, someone is searching for this word and this word, and Google is bringing the wrong search results, but rather someone is doing something artificial in Google, and Google is not providing the answer that I would have expected. And especially for artificial queries like that, it's really hard to say, is it right or is it not right? Because it's not something where we could easily say, well, the user clearly wants this specific thing. But uh, so usually what about uh, um, uh, marking this uh, this uh, pages ad is uh, no index and uh, and uh, sub uh, pages or archive or categories. Mm -hmm. What about uh, no index in them? You can do that, but what will probably happen is that your other pages won't show up instead. So it's not that the rest of your site will rank higher because you no know index this other page. Uh, what might just happen is you take this page out, and then none of your content is ranking for that query. So that's kind of something you kind of have to balance there with removing something that you don't like in the search results or actually still ranking uh, with any content at all in the search results. OK, fine. All right, more questions from any of you. Hi, John. If I may, another question. Uh, yes. I found out that some empty pages without any useful information or any content of some website with some really good authority are really ranking much better in the top 10 uh, than other good quality pages uh, from websites with uh, lower authority. And we actually have uh, like a lot of examples of that. Possibly the recommendations of Matt Katz are no longer accurate, um, and there's no point to create a unique content or high quality content. Or <laughs> no, I, w I wouldn't say that. Um, you're, you're always welcome to send these examples our way. Um, we, we do take a look at these, so that, that might be an option there. Um, there are, I, I guess, different things that could be happening there, which is really hard to say without actually looking at examples and kind of seeing what exactly is happening there. What might be happening is that the page changed recently, and we 
kind of still have the old signals, and we think, well, this page was really fantastic in the past. Maybe it's just a mistake on the webmaster side that it disappeared. Um, that might be happening. It might be happening that we're being kind of misled through some artificial signals that we're not judging properly. Uh, so maybe we're picking up something completely wrong. That's always a possibility. Um, another thing that might be happening there is that we see that pretty much all of the pages for this, this query are so bad that we don't even know which ones we should show on top because they're they're all kind of like, we don't trust them, and this is, has bad quality content. This has a lot of spammy links. And this does cloaking or something like that. And essentially, we have a collection of really kind of lower quality pages or bad pages. And we don't really have any way of saying, well, this is less worse than this one. So what might be happening is we just pick one of these. But it's really, really hard to say what, what might be happening there without actually looking at the details. So if you want to send them my way, feel free to kind of uh, send me a private note on Google+, and I can pass that on. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for your answer. We actually collected a lot of examples in one Google Doc. So we would be glad to share it with you, to send it to you, so you could take a look. OK, fantastic. Great. Thank you. John, I have a disavow question. All right. Um, if you if you disavowed a site, uh, example.com, and then you, I go back through the disavow file and that old URL is 301 to somewhere else, what's the what's the upshot of that? You have to then disavow the new one, or Google will see both, or good question. Yeah. So. <laughs> Essentially, Thank you. you'd have that's, to disavow. That's not bad for after three years. Yeah, so essentially, you'd have to disavow the new one, because what would happen is we would see that link as being between the new canonical URL and your website or web, whatever page on your website, and uh, in order for us to drop that that link, we kind of need to know which the canonical version is that you want to have disavowed. All right, I thought so, because I see a lot of, I've done a few lately for our sites, and I've seen a lot of them, the really old, bad, dodgy directories and domains essentially moving somewhere else and then relinking. And then it's like a moving target. And I guess unless they're really damaging, it's not worth bothering, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always that situation where if you look at it and you're like, oh, this looks really problematic, and should I do something about it? Should I not do something about it? Personally, I just disavow them and kind of clean that up so you don't have to worry about it again in the future. But at the same time, if you're going through this regularly and you constantly see this, this kind of jumping around, then obviously it's a big hassle and you kind of have to weigh, like, is this really a problem for my website or am I just keeping myself busy doing stuff? Right. That presumably, <laughs> presumably it takes some... Um, it takes just as long to build a really bad site as it does to build a really good one. Yes. Like for Google to see something as really problematic, you have to spend a lot of time and effort making it that bad. So if you 301 it to a, a relatively new but low quality domain, then there's not much point disavowing a really, you know, one month, two month old crappy domain because it's not really doing anything unless it's got malware on it. It's probably not doing any harm anyway, is it? Yeah, probably. I mean, even with malware, that's not going to be a problem for your site because no. malware on a site that's linking to your site, that wouldn't be affecting your site. That's not something where, where we'd say, well, this is associated with malware. Uh, it's either malware or it's not malware. So right. that's something that we try to split off fairly clearly. But, but it's not worth spending too much time, more than every three months or something, yeah, continually I mean, finding these new sure. bad. Sure. I mean, look at it from time to time, but it's not something I look at daily or weekly. Um, finding the right balance there kind of depends on your site. If you're in, in an area where you see lots of problematic things or you know previous SEO is Never had a problem before. Still, still building stuff, then maybe it makes sense to look regularly. Otherwise, if you're just a local business and you're a bakery, and you see some crazy links from some crazy places from time to time, then that's not going to cause any problems. Okay. 
John, is that something you would uh, recommend then to possibly just look at updating the disavow file when you see something dodgy? Uh, start linking to your site. So, for example, we create content and acquire links naturally, and then some scraper sites might uh, take that content off uh, a newspaper site, something like that. Uh, and obviously, that link is passed to us. Is that something we should constantly, proactively, you know, monitor and add those to disavow? I I'd say most sites don't need to worry about. So it's, uh, these are things that you haven't been actually building a natural link for, then that's not something I really worry about. If someone is just scraping it and then you link to the site, then that, that should happen. We should get the link. Okay, thank you. So about uh, um, uh, health niche in Google, does Google has any sensitivity for uh, Health niche. I mean, um, I didn't understand the question completely. Can you repeat it? I'm asking about uh, health niche in Google search. Does Google any has any sensitivity for uh, health uh, queries um, um, or limitation? Um, so the uh, about ranking inside a new site, ranking inside a and Google is hard uh, in health niche or something. So it's in the health net, or how yes. do you mean? So is this an association of websites? No, I just, I mean, uh, is there any limitation in you, our um, <sighs> Are you saying in the health niche? Yes. So in the health uh, environment. Okay. There's, well, it's it can be hard to rank in in any area where there's a lot of established players already. So that's something that I I think is is kind of normal that some areas of the web are a lot easier to kind of show up in a, in a very visible way. In other areas, there are just a lot of really strong websites already, as a lot of websites that do everything right. So it's, it's very hard to get in there. And our recommendation is usually, especially if you're starting out, is find an area where you can be the leader or you can be clearly the one that, that is providing the right information at the right time um, and where you kind of have room to grow a little. So finding that area of the web that works best for you, that's kind of how, how you want to start out there. But it's, it's not easy in the beginning. OK, thanks. All right, uh, with that, we're just about out of time. Um, I have someone else taking this room, so I have to jump out a little bit early. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thanks for all the questions. Um, as always, feel free to ask more questions in the help forum or to add them to the event listing. And there should be new events set up for the future as well. So maybe I'll see you in one of those Hangouts. And uh, until then, I wish you all a great time. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.